I'm about to give this mismatched thrifted set of coffee tables a fresh finish for my best friend's new lake house. They're going to get some new driftwood looking tops and beautiful lake blue bases. Let's go. Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I am a little extra excited about this week's video because my best friend just bought a new cottage or cabin or lake house. The vernacular changes depending on where you're from, but it's a beautiful little house beside a beautiful little lake in Nova Scotia, Canada. And it means that I am now on the hunt to find and flip a bunch of furniture to help them fill their space and create a cozy second home. I picked up all three of these tables from my Habitat for Humanity Restore the other day. The coffee table and one of the end tables are a matching pair and they also had this very similar already painted guy in there at the same time. So I thought I could finish them all the same way and get myself a three piece set. These two matching tables might look like wood, but they're actually MDF or medium density fiberboard with a faux wood finish over top already. And although I kind of like the color of it, the finish is flaking away. So I'm going to need to work around that. And the bases of these are kind of like that Ikea white lacquered finish. The other table is solid wood that's already been painted a few times, so I'll just be giving it all the same steps as the other two tables to make them match. Since I can't sand back and restain this MDF, I'm going to be creating a faux wood look on these tops with paint, but the first thing I need to do is clean these because, well, they're gross. I've seen so many other flippers use these drill attachment scrub brushes over on Instagram and TikTok lately. So I finally broke down and bought my own set and I'm using some simple green all-purpose cleaner with this just to cut through all the junk. These definitely aren't a necessary tool of the trade, but holy cow, they're fun. Once I had each surface scrubbed down, I went back and wiped everything clean with some water and a microfiber cloth and then let the tables dry for a bit. Next up, it was time to sand, and I needed to sand these for a few different reasons. I wanted to make sure that I knocked off any of that original finish that was already coming loose so that it didn't keep flaking off underneath my new finish. I wanted to smooth out some of the deeper scratches and dents around the edges, and I wanted to create some micro scratches in this slippery finish so that my primer has some sort of texture to grab onto. I wiped away all of the sanding dust with a clean, dry microfiber cloth, and then I got ready to prime. This is a shellac based primer that I love and I use all the time because it does all of the things that you could ever want a primer to do. It sticks to pretty much any surface, it blocks in stains and odors, and it's going to seal up any of the really moisture damage prone MDF surfaces that I exposed while I was sanding so that those don't swell up and create any new texture when I apply my water-based paint. It does need some pretty harsh ammonia to clean it up though. So I like to line a roller tray with some foil and just use a cheap dollar store roller to apply it so that I don't have to worry about that. Thank you. 
I rolled on two coats over each table and this stuff dries so quickly that once I was finished with the first coat on the last table, I was able to start right back at the beginning and roll on the second. So now I've got three boring all white tables. I left those to fully cure for a few hours and then when I was ready to get back to work, I rubbed them all down with a fine grit sanding pad to knock back any of the roller texture and wiped away all my dust again. I decided to work on the faux wood tops first, so I grabbed this can of wooden primer from Retikit. This stuff is specifically made to create these faux wood finishes. It's rated for both interior and exterior surfaces and actually has real recycled wood fibers right in the paint. I still had a bit of the original wood grain texture on the MDF tops, but I made sure to keep all of my brush strokes going in the same direction to help with this new wood effect. I ended up needing to apply two coats of this to get full coverage and all of Retikit's products need about two hours in between layers to dry. The next step in this process is the gel stain and I'm using the color Driftwood here and their rubber wood grading tools. I wanted to keep these planks looking individual, so I used a bit of low-tack painter's tape just to mask off every other section, and then I started brushing a layer of stain over each plank. It's really important to keep your brush strokes with this stuff all going in the direction that you want your new wood grain to go. If they're going in the opposite direction or they're just all over the place, it really messes with the effect. So once I had the stain spread out and brushed through, I grabbed one of the two graining tools that came in my Retikit kit and I just dragged it through the wet stain from one end of the board to the other, just rocking it slightly as I went. A really nice thing about this stuff is how forgiving it is. It stays wet and kind of workable for a few minutes, so you really do have a good amount of time to play around with things until you're happy with how it looks. If you don't like the grain that you created, you can just brush right back through it and go again, which I did a lot on this. Once the first planks were dry, I just moved all of my tape over and repeated the same procedure on the rest of the planks. I think the hardest things about this finish are one, trusting the process because it does look kind of cheesy for a bit and also having the patience to wait for each layer to dry. Once the graining was dry over that base wood primer, this is what I was working with. Like I said, it's cheesy. We gotta trust the process. The next layer for me is more of the same driftwood stain brushed straight over top. Again, keep all of your grain going in the same direction. And I like to go back around the edges after I'm done, or I think I'm done, just to make sure that none of the stain has dripped or is pooling up on the corners. So here's the difference between just the graining tool and with one more layer of stain over top. 
I ended up deciding to do two coats of the gel stain over top of that initial grain pattern to get the depth of color that I liked. And then I grabbed some of their whitewash glaze to add a bit more dimension and get that sort of sun bleached or weathered wood quality. This stuff is super thin and drippy, but I just made sure that I coated each tabletop and then kept brushing back and forth until it was nicely blended on there. I also grabbed a rag to have with me so that I could wipe off my brush if I had too much glaze. And again, you're going to want to keep a close eye on the edges and corners because this stuff is a sneaky dripper. Okay, I decided that was enough layers. I was happy with the look and the color, so I was ready to seal all of this up with Triple Teak. This is a low VOC, non-yellowing top coat that has a high amount of solids in it, so they compare it to like an epoxy finish. It's kind of the consistency of egg whites, but after giving it a good stir, I just used my cleaned out brush and brushed two coats over all three tops and left those to cure overnight. The next morning I wrapped up all of my new tops with some paper to protect them while I painted the bases and then I laid out a drop cloth and flipped everything upside down. I'm painting these with my current favorite paint which is Bear's Alkid Satin Enamel Melamine Finish. I chose this deep lake blue called English Channel and I'm going to spray it with my pneumatic spray gun. I filtered the paint through a paper strainer in case there were any pigment chunks in there, put on my respirator, pulled out my air hose, tested out my spray pattern on a piece of cardboard, and then got to work. This paint is another interior exterior grade paint that is extremely durable once it's cured and it can take quite a lot of wear and some serious scrubbing before it starts to show any signs of weakness. It's basically a tough oil based finish in a water based formula. It has a 48 hour recoat time depending on the temperature and humidity that you're working in. So after my first coat on the bottoms had dried, I flipped everything over and sprayed on two more coats the right way around. So I was sure to get every surface. When my last coat of paint was drying, I got out my little rotary tool and an 80 grit sanding drum and really quickly just ground off all of the paint mess that was on these cup poles. And then I laid them out on some cardboard and gave them a few coats of Rust-Oleum Metallics Antique Bronze to make them all match. My masking is safe to come off and we can finally see the wood grain next to this gorgeous bright blue. I need to pop the handles back on and then I think I'm done with these. I know that was a lot of steps for a pretty simple makeover, but none of them were hard or particularly time consuming. I worked on this set over three days, but only about 10 or 15 minutes at a time with hours of downtime waiting for stuff to dry in between. I love the fresh finish that these have got now, and I'm excited to see them in their new home soon. I'm not sure how soon, but soon. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me again as I worked on these and maybe picked up some valuable tips along the way. I'll leave some other coffee table makeovers I've done here for you to watch next if you're interested, and I will catch you all next time. Mm -hmm.